In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to look at some navigation shortcuts for working with the timeline. Often when you're a brand new editor to PowerDirector, the default way of moving the current time indicator or the playhead is simply to take the mouse and drag it to the right or to the left. There are some quicker and more efficient ways to move it around and we're going to show you some of those in this particular tutorial. But to use that, first of all, we need to understand two buttons that are under the preview screen. One is called Clip, the other is called Movie. Why are they there and what do they do? Well, right now you notice that the Movie Clip is blue. So when we have the Movie Clip as blue, we're looking at the entire movie or the entire project. You notice the time code to the right of movie. So that tells me where my playhead is in the entire movie. It's 42 seconds and 7 frames. Now without moving the playhead at all, I'm going to click on the word clip. And you notice a couple of things changed. First of all, the time code changed because now it measured the time code into that clip, not into the movie. We also have a host of tools that pop up when we're in clip mode. So you can operate in clip mode or movie mode. Now I use the mouse to change it because again, that's the default way in which we learn to do it. But I would like to recommend trying two different keys on your keyboard. If you push the page down key, you automatically go into the movie option. If you press the page up key on the keyboard, you go into the clip option. And these two turn on or off a set of options that will help you when you're trying to move around. So page down is movie, page up is clip. Let me show you a couple of other things when it comes to navigating the timeline, especially from the keyboard controls. Now we have to be in the clip mode, so I press the page up key. Now if I want to go to the first frame in the clip or the last frame in that clip, you notice it's highlighted. I simply press the home key and I'm at the first frame. The end key takes me to the last frame. Now it would be nice if I push the end again if it would take me to the next clip, but it doesn't do anything in clip mode. But if I want to get to the first frame in the next clip that I have, all I need to do is hold the control key down. And when I'm holding that down, I press the right arrow key on the keyboard. That takes me to the first frame in the following clip. I'm going to press it again, hold down the control and do right arrow. That takes me to the first frame in the last clip. If I try that again, nothing happens because I do not have another clip after the last clip. And as you might guess, if I want to go to the first frame in the previous clip, I do control key and then left arrow and that will navigate through to the first frame in the previous clip. And here I have no other previous clip, so it wouldn't work. So that's a really good way to move first or last frame of each of the clips. And you notice the clip that's active is the one that will be highlighted. So if I go back for control arrow again, I have my third clip highlighted. I can simply press the end key to go to the last frame in the clip or home to go to the first frame. So it's a really great way to navigate around. Now you can do it with more than video clips. Let's click here on our track with our titles. I have a title called Beach here. Now, if I press the end key, it takes me to the last frame of my title, home key to the first frame. If I, if I do control right arrow, it takes me to the first frame of the next object on that track, which happens to be another title, the title bridge. And then I can press the end key to get to the last frame. Now when we're in movie mode, we have another nice option. So I'm going to press page down to switch to movie mode. Now the home key and end keys work here, but now they work on your entire project. If I press the home key in movie mode, 
that takes me to the very beginning of my project. So if you have times when you want to go back to the first frame of everything, just make sure you press the page down key and press the home key. Likewise, if I want to see the last frame of my project, I press the end key. And here it, it, there is no video available, but it's the last frame on my audio track. And this is a nice place to go sometimes to check to make sure that you don't have something that's an orphan piece of video or audio way at the end of the project. So you render it and then you wind up with black screen what you see here. So it's a nice way to use the home and end keys when you're in the movie mode to move between the very beginning and the very ending of your project. There's another shortcut you might find useful, especially in a long project. That's to use the time code to position your time indicator or your scrubber. The way to do that is click on the time code or you can use the control G key to get there right away. And then you simply type in the values. Let's say we want to go in one minute, five seconds, 10 frames. So my frames are highlighted. I'll change the 13 to 10. I'll back up to the seconds and I'll change it to five. I'll go to the minute value and type in one. Then I press the enter key. And now I've positioned my playhead or my time indicator exactly one minute, five seconds, and 10 frames into the project. So it's a very nice way to, to position your time indicator or scrubber without having to drag and try to get it exactly right. You can simply type the values in and it will move it accordingly.